Well, it's here. The Orc Thing Goblins Arcane Journal. I'm excited for this one. Want to go over it? See what's new? What are we getting? What rules are we getting? What new, what new units are we going to get? And as you watch this, I want to point out that there's actually um, the Orc and Goblin actual faction review. I re-recorded it. I did it months ago. And um, they're more, it was really more my first impression. Now that I've played with the Orcs and Goblins a bunch of times, I played against them a bunch of times. I felt like I could redo the review as a proper review. I already did record that. In fact, I'm going through all of the armies and re-recording all of them because I have a lot more experience under my belt. Now, because this Arcane Journal dropped, I'm going to put out the Orcane Goblin new review, the two-month-in review, three-month-in review, uh, available right now for the channel members. Uh, you can follow the link in the description below to get to that video and you watch it right now. Uh, but it's to be for the channel members. Uh, for those of you who don't want to sign up, no problem. It will come out eventually when I record all of them and get them all done. I will put out the series all over again. But for now, if you don't want to wait, you want to see how my feelings about that book have changed with this Arcane Journal that's been re-reviewed in the members-only section. These Arcane Journals, I, at first, I didn't know what to think about these things. There's only the third one, and I'm already loving them. Uh, right off the hop, where I see right away, we have a new mission. Ambush at Winter's Teeth Pass. I'm not going to go over all that. Too much to go over there. I typically don't like um, narrative missions. They're never balanced. And usually, in my experience, not to rag on uh, these custom missions, or these, sorry, these narrative missions, usually, uh, in my experience, you have to play them once. Um, then you get what they're going for proper. And then you play it again, and it's kind of cool. And I just wish... Uh, which was a little more to these. Uh, they do have the old dwarf pony and dwarf cart as parts in this mission, like with actual stats. The goods cart is toughness five with three wounds. A dwarf pony has one weapon skill, two strength, three attack. That was from like Battle for Skull Pass box set. I think it was sixth edition. Either way, that's in the ambush for Winter's Teeth Pass narrative mission. Lots of cool artwork, which is. Not gonna lie, kind of awesome. Let's take a look at some of these things. Can't can't be upset about that. Oh, there's that new model. Boom. Right there, dead center. Right by my finger. Oh, and they're showing off that plastic uh, orc character kit. Oh, uh, I know you want to get to the rules, but I I'm really hoping this model comes back. This this is a model I've always been trying to get my hands on. Storm Bolter, don't look for it. It's probably coming back. Just wait and see. <laughs> Looters and Raids. Okay, so we know already from the back of the book we have the... Uh, does it say the back of the book? Not really. Oh, it does. Uh, the Nomadic Wah and the Troll Hordes. I've already read through them, and I'm excited to play both of them. So let's go over the Orc and Goblins Nomadic Wah first. We'll go over the Nomadic Wah. We'll go over the... Uh, troll herd, and then we'll go over the new magic items. Oh, there actually is some new units in between, but we'll get to those as we get to them. So the army composition for the nomadic wah. Whoops, hit my mic. Up to fifty percent of your points may be spent on zero to one black orc war boss or black orc big boss per black orc chariot. Now that's going to sound confusing. I'll let you know now. There's a rule. Uh, two page, two pages over. Um. The rule for Black Orcs, the boys, is no longer in effect for this this list. In fact, neither, neither is Quell Animosity or Impetu oh, Sorry, neither is Quell Impetuosity. So you don't have to bring in a Black Orc character for every Black Orc boy unit. There's more rules explaining as to why. Oh no, my phone. I need to silence that. As we are very professional on this channel, we do everything in one take here. <clears throat> All right. So we also get the zero to one black, sorry, zero to one orc war boss, uh, or weird knob per thousand points, and then orc big bosses, weird boys, goblin bosses, and goblin shaman. All right, so for core, twenty five percent of your points must be spent on goblin wolf rider mobs, goblin wolf chariots, and if your general is an orc boss or orc boy mob, orc boy boy. <laughs> Sorry, let me rephrase that. <laughs> if your general is an orc boss, zero to one boar boy mob may be taken as core. And if your general is a black orc, zero to one black orc cherry may be taken as core. Which is, while I was making a bunch of lists with this, I found that to be a little, um, 
I don't know, frustrating. I want my general to be the, the well, if you bring a black war character, he must be your general. He's the highest leadership. Uh, but I want boar boys to be uh, core. To, well, to really use my model collection, I guess I could buy more models. But yeah, I, I want uh, boar boys to be core, even with a black war general. But that's not how it's going to work here today. And then in special, we have orc boar, boar boy mobs, orc boar chariots, and snotling pump wagons. And then 25% of your points in rare can be spent on black orc chariots and giants. And then we got mercenaries. Actually, we'll probably go over the mercenary section in a bit, too. So, uh, mercenaries, up to 25% of your points may be spent on Badland Ogre Bulls and 0 to 1 Bone Grinder Giant. Uh, and BSB, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay, so already you can see your list is heavily restricted. You have pretty much mounted things and characters. No war machines, no foot, anything really. So no black orcs, no goblins, not without a mount anyway. So the rules for the nomadic wall are cunning hunters. Well, uh, within a nomadic wall army, any number of goblin wolf rider mobs may have the ambushers rules at the cost of one point per model. In addition, goblin bosses and goblin shamans that are mounted on a giant wolf may have ambushers as well for ten points per model. Okay, so goblins are the ambushers. Make sense? Hit them fast. Hit them hard. Within a nomadic wa army, orcs that are mounted on a war war, black orc bosses, orc bosses, orc shaman, orc war boys, gain impact hits one. Love it. Love it. Uh, the strength of the uh, boar at AP1. And 0 to 1 boar boy mob per 1,000 points may have the vanguard special rule for one point per model. This is going to this is gonna be a list that I'm not going to like to play. And Luke is going to hate to play against, but I'm going to play it and he'll have to play against it. So, uh, putting Vanguard on your Boar Boys means they're charging turn one. But, spoiler alert, I told you earlier, no longer do we have the um, Quell Impetuosity rule. So, uh, you, 50 50, you don't have control of your Boar Boys or anything in your army. Uh, there will be a hunting pack. Any goblin wolf rider with a nomadic wall army may exchange the open... Sorry, any goblin wolf rider within nomadic wall army may exchange open order and skirmish for close order and, close order and horde. I always say close. I can't not say it. It is one of my weird things I can't get past. But whenever I say close order, I mean close order. I think you guys know that by now. So you can take your wolf riders, uh, remove skirmish, and remove... What was the Vanguard? Oh, sorry, open, no open order, no skirmish, gain close order, and horde. Oh, uh, Light Cav only gets one rank bonus, so that means you can have 15 of these in a unit with the horde special rule for two for plus two rank bonus. Uh, do I want to do that? I don't know. I'm probably going to have to try it. I need to get more more Goblin Wolf Riders, though. Uh, there's a magic item that's going to help out with this. We'll talk about that at the end. So keep that in mind. We're going to talk about more magic items that are going to work well with these. Um, what do we call these? Armies of infantry, Infamy comp Compositions. All right, uh, next rule. On to move. All characters with a nomadic wall army must be mounted. I think we all saw that coming. Nobody's on foot here today. Solitary fighters. Black orc bosses with, within the nomadic wall are not subject to the boys. That's where you have to bring uh, black orcs. You don't have to bring black orcs. Um, and Quell Impetuosity. So they lose their Quell Impetuosity. They don't have to bring Black War on foot. They do have to bring one chariot per character. One Black War chariot per character. Uh, and we'll do those stats in a minute. But, uh, yeah. So, there's a little flavor text here. Mounted top chariots liberated from weaker orcs. Many Black Orcs discover a new love for cumping the enemy while careening amongst the battlefield. So, they care more about, you know, zip zipping around the battlefield on their mount, uh, whatever mount it might be, than keeping the army in line. So no, no Quell Impetuosity. Um, we already know I don't like that, but it'll be fun to play. That's it. That, that's the that's the um, uh, Nomadic Walk. I guess before we move on to the next one, we might as well look at the new units that we were talked about there. So we're going to think about... Um, There you go, Black Orc Chariots. They're 130 points. Keep in mind, a regular Boar Chariot is 90 points. We're paying, like, 50% more, basically. We're paying 40% more, 40 points more. Upgrade an Orc Chariot to a Black Orc Chariot. We know it's rare, and it's only for the Nomadic Wah composition. 
Uh, they have a three up armor, which is pretty good. It's a heavy chariot. Don't get me wrong, it's damn good. And they come with uh, two boars and two black orcs. No, black orcs do have furious charge, can take additional hand weapons or great weapons. So, all that's pretty good. Now, the great thing about these chariots are, th well, they do, they do have first charge like a regular orc chariot. They have ignore panic. Uh, the same impact as a regular uh, boar chariot and tusker charge. But what they don't have is impetuous. So, black orc chariots are not impetuous. Regular orc chariots are. No, I'm not overly interested in proxying mine, so I'm not the uh, buy a couple more chariots and a box of black orcs to make some of these up. But yeah, they're they're expensive, heavy chariots. Strength, toughness five, four wounds, three up armor save, good fighters on top, leadership eight. Like these are solid, solid chariots for 130 points. Very comparable to the um, Warriors of Chaos chariots I was thinking of. Very comparable. Yeah. So that's the that's the new unit for the um the nomadic wall. I do want to go over one magic item. And we'll go back and we'll do all of them at the end. But there's one magic item in particular I thought I really enjoyed was the, the thinking orcs the thinking orcs at. It's a hat. It's a 25 point magic item. The wear of the thinking orc at improves their initiative characteristic by one. Okay. In addition, the wear in any unit they're joined are not subject to the impetuous special rule. So I was thinking about that Goblin Wolf Rider unit. I'm going to make a horde of Goblin Wolf Riders for melee. Put them inside their closed order formation. Give um, a Wolf Rider boss this hat. So at least I can control them. But even better, when I, when I was thinking about doing that, I was thinking this, the Thinking Orcs at is going to be a mainstay for Orcs, I think, going on in the future. Because even a regular army of, uh, sorry, Grand Army composition, you can take a orc, sorry, a goblin character with this hat to join wolf riders that are skirmishing, and now you don't have impetuous. Now you have control of reserve move skirmishing, a uh, fast cav, which is, you know, uh, <laughs> a thing orcs didn't have in the past, and that's a very powerful tool that they're going to have access to for just a twenty-five point magic item and the cost of the character to bring it. But goblin characters aren't expensive. I think it's a it's a damn good magic item, but. Uh, you'll see me using the Nomadic Wall every time I play, probably. Because even even a Black Orc leading a unit of Boar Boys. Um, yeah, I mean, not having Impetuous on them, controlling them when you need to. The problem with that, you know, I'm going to start to ramble now, is there's so many magic items I now want to use that I don't know if I can fit that in a character. But we'll get to that discussion a little bit later. The next army is the Troll Herd. Oh, um. I haven't ever said it. So this coming week, I will be playing my live stream on Wednesday and Thursday um, with one of each of these. I'll be playing, I'll probably play Troll Herd on Wednesday and Nomadic Wah on Thursday. Uh, no, keep in mind those streams are coming up on Wednesday and Thursday night at 5 and 6, p sorry, 6 p.m. Eastern time. But if this video has been out for a while, those videos are already up and you can watch an army or a battle report right now with each of these attachments. So the Goblin, Orc and Goblin Tribes Troll Horde not heard, horde. Up to 50% of your army points may be spent on 0 to 1 orc war boss or orc weird knob per 1,000 points. And then orc bosses, weird boys, goblin bosses, goblin shaman troll eggs. If you noticed, we got no black orcs here. At least 33% of your army must be spent on 1 troll mob per 1,000 points. That means in a 2,000 point game, you have to bring 2 troll mobs in this composition. You have to. And you may have one additional troll mob taken as a core choice per troll hag taken. We'll talk about the troll hag in a bit. And then orc mobs, goblin mobs, goblin spider riders, and goblin wolf riders. Um, yeah, those are your core options. Your special options are trolls, again, and goblin wolf chariots. And then 0 to 1 boar boy per 1,000 and 0 to 1 orc chariot per 1,000 points in the army. Your rare is 25% of Giants, and that's it. Giants. So, um, yeah, no no war machines. No black orcs in the troll horde. Uh, mercenaries, battleland ogre bulls, and a bone grinder. Once again, we'll get to that later. And then magic items and BSV as normal. What rules are we gaining for this troll horde? So we lose our black orcs, we lose our war machines. Those are pretty big hits. What do we get? Models with regeneration X, special rule within a troll horde army. 
Reroll failed regeneration of saves against wound caused by non magical attack. Every troll has regeneration. The hag has regeneration. These are all rerollable against non magical attacks. I'm finding magical attacks aren't, in my experience, my local meta, we're not seeing as many magic attacks as we have in the past. Uh, some characters are bringing them these days. Now, Warriors of Chaos, I think everything they have is magical these days, but you don't want to fight Warriors of Chaos for the troll horde. And then we have Oi This Way. Unless the character is fleeing, friendly troll mobs within the troll or horde army that are within the command range of an orc shaman, a goblin shaman, or a troll hag can use the leadership characteristics of those mobs instead. So the stupidity is important here. We have to use leadership of at least the orc shamans and the troll hag. The troll hag gives leadership eight. So not bad. And then we have troll tongue. In addition to the lords of magic that they normally know, spells, uh, sorry, normally know where the spells from. Orc shamans and goblin shamans within the troll horde may know spells from the lore of troll magic. Which is awesome. We have a cool lore to play around with. We have two lores for the orcs, the wall magic and troll lore, or sorry, what's it called? Troll magic? That's troll magic. Uh, there's a couple of items to talk about for this as well, but let's talk about the goblin hag first. Old forge world model, already have mine rebased. Uh, the actually, if I can find a picture of her just for you guys. Of course, she might set up at home, does not allow me to show the book as I'm doing everything, as I'm reviewing everything. But there she is. Now, the troll hag, I think I'll just pull this up real quick if you want to see this part. Right there. Oh, focus. Character. It's a character. A troll hag is a behemoth. That's also a character. Movement 5, weapon skill 2, ballistic skill 2, strength 6, toughness 5, 6 wounds, initiative 2, 3 attacks, and leadership 8. 235 points. It's a level 1 wizard. He uses spells from battle magic or troll magic. Upgrade to level 2 for 35 points, not 30. So you can make this 270-point uh, behemoth character. That's a level two with uh, decent stats and can buy up to 50 points of magic items. We have a closed order, flammable, uh, immune psychology, indiscriminate hunger. It's a special rule we'll get to in a second. Large target, motherly love, another rule we'll get to in a second. Regeneration of five plus, slimy shanks, stomp attacks D6, stupidity, terror, timber, and unbreakable. All right, so indiscriminate hunger, uh, real quick, it's just going to be in the command phase. There's like Four paragraphs here, but in the command phase, pick a mall you're in contact with. It doesn't uh, initiative check. If it fails, you eat it and heal a wound. Otherwise, it's fine. Motherly love is how it fights in combat. So you can either do three strength six behemoth attacks with looks like no AP. Yeah, no AP. Or you can do the motherly love roll. It's a it's a giant table. Uh, so it's a D6 roll, but it's basically a D3 roll because there's only three options and they're evenly spaced. So if you roll one or two, you have smother, a three, four, you have mother, and a five, six, you have mither. So if you roll, I like all of these actually, but for different targets. So if you roll one or two, you're going to smother the enemy. You place a large blast over top of the enemy unit. Um, you risk being hit on a four plus. It, it does say that this model is immune to being hit by it, uh, but you take a strength six AP2 hit if you're hit by the large blast. Awesome. Just awesome. Mother is more good. Is more good. Is more goodly for tracking single models. <laughs> the troll hag uh, chastises her foe as if it were her wayward offspring. Uh, so pick a model. Um, it suffers a hit and takes D three plus one wounds with no armor saves or regeneration permitted. That one's awesome. It has terrible weapon skill, so you just hit automatically. D three and then I guess wound automatically too. A unit just takes D three plus one. Sorry, a model takes D three plus one wounds. If you get fighting a big monster, you want to roll Mother. If you want to fight a big uni, you want to roll some other. But then we have Mither. You roll a 5-6. The troll hag bombards the enemy with a triad of slaps and a torrent of unintelligible trollish invective? I don't know what this word means. Anyways, the unit suffers D6 plus 1 hits. Uh, at strength 6 with no armor permitted. In addition, so, so shocked is the unit that at the end of the turn, it suffers a minus 1 to its leadership characteristic. Now, that's awesome. 
because you roll that one against the unit. You, they take D6 with one hits, strength six, AP two, probably gonna kill them out, right? They're minus one leadership. Then you have your stomp, uh, which are D6, strength six, AP two attacks because you're a uh, behemoth. And, and you have terror. Uh, so 2D, if you roll five, six, you're at 2D6 plus one, strength six, AP two attacks. Uh, do your leadership check at minus two. I love this model. Um, it comes with troll vomit. So if you roll troll vomit, it's a it's an attack that works after all stomps. Like the last thing you ever do. One model in base contact takes a strength three hit, AP two automatic hit. And this model also has a swamp breath. It is a breath weapon that strength three, AP two. Uh, I love this model. I wish I could take it in a regular goblin army, or sorry, regular orc and goblin army. Oh wait, I can. <laughs> um, any army may include. Is there any army using the Orc and Goblin Grand Army that includes one or more troll mobs may include this troll hag as a rare choice. Now, it's rare choices. It's not the cheapest thing, but it's a character that you can buy for rare in an Orc and Goblin mob. All you gotta do is bring uh, a unit of trolls, which makes sense. I love this model. There are, in 50 points of magic items you can put on this thing, like the first thing I want to do is give it um, Talisman of Protection. So I have a five up regeneration rerollable after my five aboard and my scaly skin, which counts as heavy armor. So five up, five up, five up, five up rerolling. No, sorry, five up, five up, five up rerolling. Four chances of fives. You see, I have twenty points left over. Or there's other combos. Like there's a magic item in here. Uh, oh, I think I forgot to mention. Where is it? Oh, slimy shanks. Any model that directs attacks against this model during the combat phase suffers a minus one to hit. So it's only weapon skill two, but it's minus one to hit. There's a magic item you can buy that gives minus one to hit. So you can make this character minus two to hit. Though, then again, there's a whole separate conversation about that because that item is probably better off on a black orc who also buys a dazzling helm and now you're minus two to hit. Anyway, a lot of good magic items in this book. So Troll Hag, love it. Let's see how well it does. Should we talk about some mercenaries before we go on to magic items? Why not? That's the next section of the book. Badland Ogres. Oh, I want to find a picture of these droopy looking guys. Now you can use any ogre you want, obviously. No, they're not in this book. Or I'm not quickly finding them. There's an article about these guys on Warhammer Community you can pull up. It's this old, old metal orc model. I'm sorry, ogre models. But they're probably going to be used as a... Uh, sorry, they're probably going to be sold as resin. So Badland Ogre Bulls. There's nothing to talk about here. Um, it's just, it's almost copy and paste Ogre Bulls, but 31 points, uh, movement six, weapon skill three, blitz skill two, strength toughness four, three wounds, initiative two, three attacks, leadership seven, 40 by 40 millimeter base, three unit size, three plus, they come with a hand weapon, a light armor, they can buy additional hand weapon for three points, a great weapon for four points, and an iron fist for four points. Uh, character, like, uh, sorry, standard musician champion upgrades, 50 points for the magic banners, and... They're going to play light armor with heavy armor. So basically, you can recreate Ogre Bulls or Iron Guts with these guys here. They have the Ogre Charge rule. Um, uh, fear. Imp like, it's just, it's just all the Ogre rules, but they also have the Mercenary Special Rules. So if you're unfamiliar with the Mercenary Special Rules, go into the core rule book. It can be uh, some wacky zaniness with Mercenaries. Now, they also have a little bo uh, box at the bottom called Dogs of War. Badland Ogre Bulls may be taken as a mercenary in any army using a grand army composition that includes a mercenaries category. So we're going to start to see dogs of war in the game. Uh, Badland Ogre Bulls work for anybody. That's kind of cool. So now you can, now there's a reason to buy some Age of Sigmar Ogre, Bull, Ogre Bulls or Iron Guts. Even man eaters you want. Oh, man eaters you want to make them look more custom like your army. But put ogres in your army now. Um. The Bone Grinder Giant, that old forge world tall, I, I don't I hate the looking of the model. It's a 300 point giant with strength 7, toughness 6, and 8 wounds. Otherwise, stats are very much the same. It comes on a, well, you put it on a 50 by 100 millimeter base or a 100 by 150 millimeter base. Uh, light armor, Bone Grinder attacks, musicology clothes are all the typical stuff that you would expect on a giant. Uh, and then Bone Grinder Giant attacks. And so it's attacking normally during the combat phase, the Bone Grinder Giant. Oh, this thing is 300 points. I don't know if I said that. Uh, I must make a Bone Grinder Giant attack. To nominate, pick, it's giant. Okay, so little things. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. So, if you're new to the old world, the Giants have always had a rule kind of like this, uh, not so much in this edition. So, you're going to roll a D6 and consult a chart, just like a Giant. However, they do break it up into um, uh, categories firsthand. So, we have little things, big things, and bigger things. So, little things is infantry, war beasts, stuff like that. Big things is monstrous infantry, and monstrous cavalry, light chariots, and war machines. And then bigger things are uh, heavy chariot, monstrous creatures, or behemoth. So, uh, first we're going to roll a d6. And then, so, you know what? Let's just show it to you. This will be easier. See that chart? You roll a d6. And then, say you roll one or two. And I'm going to check what I'm fighting. I'm going to fight maybe a chariot. So, it's one or two. That's crush underfoot for big things. But if it was a one or two against a behemoth, you're going to wallop them. So, little things to be crushed underfoot, grind to bones, or vomit hit on. Uh, big things to be crushed underfoot, vomit, or a mighty swing. And then bigger things get wallop, mighty swing, and headbutt. Let's see what these all are. Crushed underfoot, that's going to be for smaller type things. Place the large blast. Ooh! Strength 7, AP3, large blast. That's pretty good. Headbutt. Can we headbutt? We can only. Ed, but big things like monsters and beams stuff like that. Um, D three plus one wounds and armor save. Okay, the the, the big thing takes D three plus one wounds. That's actually kind of awesome. Ward. Uh, so no armor, no regeneration, but you can't take ward against it. Grind to bones is for little things, little things only. Uh, based upon rank and rank, yeah, yeah narrative stuff. Every model within the fighting rank of the unit must immediately take an initiative test. Uh, those unable to escape the grasping hands of the bone grinder giant are scooped up and eaten whole. Whoa! Initiative tests are removed from play. Oh, remember, that's only for little things. Do any little things have multiple wounds in this edition? Can't think of anything on top of my head. There probably is something, though. Um, those able to duck or dodge away from the bone grinder's attacks escape a terrible, uh, terrible fate. Every mole that passes this test remains unharmed. So it's just it's a save or die. Okay. So grind to bones is save or die. That's only for little things. Mighty swing. It can be used on big things and bigger things. The target suffers D6 plus 1 hits. At strength 8 AP2. That's pretty good. Vomit is only for little things and big things. So the <laughs> small, medium, and large, I'll call it. It's for small and medium. Peering down at such a tiny... Narrative, I don't care about narrative. Place the flame template so the narrow end touches the model's base and in contact with the blah, 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 and the broad end over the unit. Enemy who lies underneath the template risk being hit at strength 5 AP2. It's different. I like it. I don't hate it. And then we have a wallop. This is only for the big, 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 big things. The bone grinder giant grasps his club to blah, blah, blah. The bone grinder. Remember when the flavor part of these special rules were in a separate italic box, not the first sentence of the rule? The Bone Grinder Giant makes a single attack against the target unit. For this attack, the Bone Grinder Giant's club has a strength of 10 AP3. Oh, sorry, straight AP4. And multiple wounds 2D3. Is that just worse than Headbutt? Because you have to roll the hit with that one. It only, only works against big, big, big things. And your weapon skill 3. It's not terrible, I guess. Either way, the, the Bone Grinder Giant seems kind of amazing. Remember when I was saying earlier that I'm not overly worried about the Arcane Journals uh, getting, you know, adding a lot of power to these armies? This is this is book that seems to be a pretty big jump for the Ocean Goblins, who already, in my opinion, already are doing very, very well. Um, do The Dogs of War box for these guys. This is a uh, 0 to 1 Bone Grinder Giant, maybe taken as a mercenary in the following Grand Army composition list. Uh, orcs and goblins, warriors of chaos, and beastmen prey herds. All right, I gotta get one of these guys for sure. For sure, gotta get one of these. But we gotta follow the mercenary rules, which will actually tone this down. Actually, you know what? What do you think about that? Kind of tones this guy down a little bit. But this is one thing that can help offset the power of a dragon. I don't want this thing to fight a dragon, but it can do the same things to the enemy army a dragon army that a dragon does to you. All right, those are our mercenaries. Oh, I'm sorry, I messed up. I should have talked about troll magic, which is on the next page. 
when I was talking about the troll horde. Okay, we have a full lore here. Six spells and a signature. Our signature spell is called Big Smarts. Oh, by the way, I love this lore. It's an enchantment with the casting value of eight range of self. Um, anybody, uh, summarize it for you. Anybody failing to fit check will all within the command range of this model. It's to re-roll it. Uh, but when you cast this spell, it's already after you have done stupidity checks this turn. So there's a secondary uh, effect of this spell where if you had already failed your stupidity check this turn when this spell was cast, you can then re-roll it, which is really cool. Uh, we have Acidic Bile is uh, a magic missile, casting value of 8, range of 18, small blast. Um, it scatters D3 plus 1 inches, and then you suffer a strength 3 hit, AP2. It's an okay magic missile. We got Troll Brains. I love this one. It is a hex casting value of 9 with a range of 15. Uh, the, the enemy range in play. The enemy unit suffers from stupidity and minus 1 leadership. I don't care about the stupidity part. Casting a spell that puts minus 1 leadership on a unit is just awesome. And then if you get stupidity off on them, like if they fail stupidity, even better. But minus 1 leadership spell. Troll Brain somebody. Ravenous Recourse. Until the end of this turn, all friendly units that have stupidity within 12 of the caster gain plus two movement. Pretty cool. Folder Whirlpool. Oh, this is this is swamp water spinning in the air. I love this one. Uh, it's a magical vortex, casting value of nine, a range of 18, small blast. Uh, moves D6 in a random direction at start of every turn. Any enemy... Sorry, anybody hit is uh, D3 plus three, strength four, AP2. It's, I don't know why it's AP2. It's just swamp water spinning in the air, but the, the narrative of it, like the actual narrative text, I kind of like. A, de deluge, a deluge of foul swamp water. An unintentional... Wait, is this gross? An unmentional waste... I can't think of it. I, sorry, I have a weak stomach. You won't brackish water, which is for some reason one of my trigger points. I can't read it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Torrent of Filth. It's an assailment. Uh, place of, it's, a, it's a flame template. Assailment. Uh, strength 3 AP2. Uh, I don't like those at all. And then we got Rapid Regeneration. Uh, the unit gains flammable and regeneration of 5+. plus. Keep in mind, in a Troll Horde army, anybody with regeneration gets to re-roll it. And all those Troll Pants has got that much better as well. Yeah, so uh, the minus 1 leadership, we got a little bit of damage, some re-rolling your stupidity. Is it a is it a top-tier lore? No. Is it going to be fun? Hell yeah. Am I going to play it a lot? Hell yeah. Like, if it had things that, well, that leadership does help. What would make this lore? See, I, I think spells like uh, Tempest, Monsoon. Well, Tempest is probably the, the best. Ah, Tempest is a perfect example. Sorry, uh, because I, I think Tempest is so crazy overpowered, uh, I, I'm hard-pressed not to think about high as the most powerful lore right now. Um, because Tempest big area of dangerous terrain. I don't have any of that here. Oh, well. The photo whirlpool is a three-inch template of dangerous terrain, but it does move. You want I like dangerous terrain because um, it prevents your pre prevents your opponent from charging, and that's like the massive effect of it. And then if they do end up making the charge, they're probably still in the dangerous terrain, and thus getting no rank bonuses. You're gonna win that fight. So if if this spell had if this lore, ugh, it does have floated whirlpool. Sorry, I'm rambling. I like this lore. Is what I'm trying to say. All right, let's do magic items. Okay. I'm going to go over all these magic weapons. And once again, I, I don't like any of them. I don't think I'll ever use any orc and goblin magic item other than the wall does one hit wonder. Because orcs have a rule called um, choppas. When using a mundane item, uh, the turn you charge, you get plus one AP and reroll once to wound. It doesn't work against mag with magic items. So more often than now, that is better on a great weapon than a, than a magic item. Or even like two hand weapons sometimes. They have the one army-wide weapon special rule that applies to not just hand weapons, which is kind of cool. So for 55 points, you can buy the bigger, choppier axe. Let me tell you why this thing is terrible. <laughs> it is a great weapon. And if you take away Armor Bane and swap that for Magical Tax as a magic weapon and Quick Killing Blow, and you lose your Tropic Special Rule, all that costs you 55 points. It's just, a, it's just a great weapon with Killing Blow. But no Armor Bane, 
you gain magical attacks, and you lose the chopper's bonus. So 55 points for killing blow and lots of other bonuses. And I don't think I'd ever want to do that. Let me know in the comments if you'd ever want to do that. Maybe you can think of a reason to, to pay 55 points for killing blow and lose other really good buffs. We have Martox Best Basha for 50 points. It's strength plus one AP two. Requires two hands. The wielder of the weapon uh, gets plus one weapon skill and initiative characteristics. See, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. 50 points, but I'm losing the ability to reroll ones. And it's two-handed. But you can get the weapon skill seven on a black orc. Uh, initiative goes pretty good. Like, it's, 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 it's a good weapon. It's a good weapon. I think it's, it's, so comparing that this 50-point magic weapon to the chopper special rule. We have the accurate... I can't... The accurate act. The accurate axe. It's 30 points. Strength plus one, armor bane one. Uh reroll fail to hit. Uh the strength modifier only applies to the first round of combat. So it's reroll to hit. Uh strength plus one and armor bane one. There's not enough there. Rerolls to hit are good. Damn good. But it's not enough there to make me want to take it. No AP. There might be there might be a combo worth taking with, with that. to play around with it. But every time, every time I make an orc character that's a fighty character, every time the other items are so much better that it's always a great weapon, and then. We have the Backstabber Blade. Strength plus one, AP one. It's for goblins. Uh, if you're engaged with somebody's flank, you reroll the hit. No. Sorry, if you're engaged with somebody's flank, you reroll to wound. If you're engaged with somebody's rear, you roll the hit and a wound. Not bad for goblin. Not bad for a goblin. All right, we got Dead Art Armor for 35 points. I used to love this thing. It's still pretty good. Uh, it's for Black Orc bosses and Orc bosses who are infantry, cav, or chariot. It's full play and improves your toughness by one. I love that for 35 points. The problem is other items I want to spend my points on. For 35 points, uh, you have an Orc that is... Uh, only Black Orcs get full plate, and they have an Orc with full plate if you so if you want that. But increase your toughness to six is a pretty big deal in this edition. We have the Spiteful Shield for 20 points. The Spiteful Shield is a shield. In addition, any enemy model that rolls a natural one, uh, the hit, wait, when rolls a natural when making a hit or to wound against the wear of the uh, Spiteful Shield, immediately suffers a strength four hit with AP of nothing. I have other points I want to spend my magic items on. Talismans, we have the Sparkly Wizard of Finda. Uh, for 45 points, you get magic... Magic Resistance 2, and Hatred Enemy Wizards. Effigy of Mork for 35 points. Uh, use minus one to hit. So I was already thinking about a Black Orc character and a Wyvern with the, the Dazzling Helm and Full Plate Armor and a Great Weapon. Uh, and then the Effigy of Mork. You have five more points to spend if you want. So you are three up armor, no ward, no regeneration, but you're minus two to hit. I mean, most things in the game will be hitting you on sixes, and elves and vampires and a Bretonian dude will hit you on a five. Let's fly away from them. We'll get caught by them. Is that good? Would you rather a ward save? Let me know in the comments how you feel about that. Minus two to hit. Uh, we have some really good magic advantage in here. We have the angry lads flag. 35 points to get frenzy. Now, I know you heard me say about frenzy, but I don't mind, I don't mind frenzy on infantry. I'm putting this on a big old block of Black Orcs. Black Orcs with great weapons. Three attacks a piece on the charge. <laughs> Spider Banner. This is I'm, I'm gonna use this. Uh, I'm gonna use this on Thursday coming up. Uh, 35 points. Unit carrying the Spider Banner gains poisoned attacks. Awesome. But if you already have poisoned attacks, um, you poison on a five or six. So the unit I'm going to try this on is actually a unit of 10 spider riders and a goblin boss on a um, giant spider. Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. i got to make sure I... Uh... This is for my, go my goblin... I'm sorry, my troll horde army. Yes, sorry. Just make sure spider riders are available to them. Okay, sorry. So I'm going to take a unit of 10 spider riders on Thursday with the spider banner. So now they have poison 5+. plus. Um, firing off all those bows at Poison 5 is great, but I'm going to put a boss in there with them. 
and he's going to take that uh, magic item to the next stage. The thinking caps to take away their impetuousness, impetuosity. Yeah. Anyway, he's going to run around with them. And it'll be a solid unit for uh, uh, herring, monsters, and just at war machines, anything. That makes, there's a few magic items that take away some weak points out of orcs and goblins, pulls them right out the window. And there's a combo right there I think is going to be kind of a mainstay. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's too early to say that, but I think it's a very, very powerful combo. And then we have the Banner of the Nomads. Weirdly enough, it doesn't say you have to be a nomadic water to use this one, which I thought you would have to, but no. Um, whenever a ban the unit with this banner rolls a charge, flee, or pursuit roll, you reroll natural ones. And then Banner of the Wilds, 20 points, uh, move through cover for a unit. But I like that Poison Banner. I like that Frenzy Banner a lot. Now, here's another magic item, which my, my first read-through I thought was amazing, but I can't find a great way to really use it. But... I think it'll be. I think this will probably become a mainstay. It's fifty points. Necklace of the blessed teeth. The bearer of the black, the bearer of the necklace of the blessed teeth may reroll any armor save, ward save, or regeneration roll of one. Best combo I can think of is on a wyvern, obviously, or even on a boar. But say you're on a wyvern, um, you have troll pants for that regeneration. Uh. After you buy this, you only have 10 points left over. So that's 90 points spent. Troll pants in this. And then you um, throw on uh, Chanted Shield, I think it is. So you have uh, 4, 4, 3, 2. So you have 2 of armor. Rerolling ones. Then you have a 6 of ward save. Rerolling ones. Not great, but it's the only way to get all 3, I think. And then you have a 5 of rerolling ones. I think that's a, that's a, that's a beefy, hard to kill character. Now, that goes to my other conversation earlier. Do I want to have that character, or do I want to have the one that's minus two to hit? No, the minus two is only for melee, though. So you, you could get shot to death. Uh, we have the Grizzly Trophy Rack, a, a magic item I love to death. It's 30 points for Black Orc bosses, Orc bosses, Goblin bosses, Night Goblin bosses only. No shamans. All enemy units from the sixth of the bear of the, uh, the Grizzly Trophy Rack, minus one to their leadership characteristics, a minimum of two. Minus one leadership is so good this edition. We have the Thinking Orcs out. We already talked about that. And we have some magic items. The, sorry, the Arcane items. I mean, we have the Staff of Batum. The Bear of the Staff of Batum applies a D3 modifier, plus D3 modifier to any casting roll they make. However, if they roll natural double one or double six when making a casting roll, place the large blast, five inch blast, over their head, and every model takes a strength six AP one hit, and the staff is destroyed. Man, this item might be overpowered if it didn't potentially blow up. I don't want to use it because it could break. Because it'll always break turn first time I use it for me. But it's a, it's a good item. It's a little unreliable. Uh, Idol of Gork. The Bear of Idol of Gork increases the range of all spells by three. In addition, once per turn, can reroll a casting roll. Oh, that's an amazing item. I, I'm using, in my troll horde list, I have a lot of shamans. A lot of, a lot of shaming, shamans, shamans. And I'm using all these magic items. And then there's the Da Hag Brew. Orc Shaman, Goblin Shaman, Mag uh, Night Goblin Shamans. Uh, in addition to spells you know normally, they can also roll spells on the lore of uh, Troll Magic. Keep in mind, Troll Magic is only for the Troll Horde army composition, or if you want to use it in your regular Goblin, sorry, your regular Orcs and Goblin army of Grand, whatever it's called, uh, you can pay 25 points and then two spells off of that, which I can actually see myself doing. So often I take Wizards with no magic items, so this will have, have no problem fitting this in if I really want troll magic in a list that's not the troll horde. That's pretty awesome. Well, other than you can bring a troll hag in a regular goblin or goblin list, and that also is troll magic. But it's only level two. So yeah, uh, a couple more things to talk about in this book. Name characters. We have Kicknick Toof Nasha. Uh, we have, a, it's a goblin mounted character. Typical stats you see in a goblin character. Uh, it has the boss's trophy rack, the skull smasher, cavalry spear, light armor, shield. Um, special rules are all sneaky lie, ambushers, armor bane. Uh, oh, armor bane is for his mount. Armor hide one, bow, or anything else we're talking about. Okay, here's where it's the special rules. So we have all sneaky like, all sneaky like, not all sneaky like, all sneaky like. Zero to one goblin wolf rider mob in the same army, uh, same muster list. I don't know why that matters as Kilnick, may have the ambush or special rule for free. In addition, you may apply a plus one or minus one modifier to the result when determining 
if a Goblin Warfighter mob with the Ambush or Special Rule that is currently held in reserve arrives this turn as reinforcements were delayed. So that's not terrible. But keep in mind, they're still going to be impetuous. Hit and run. Should they win a round of combat, kill Nick and any Goblin Warfighter mob he has joined, may choose to fall back and get order rather than making a follow-up or pursue move. That's actually pretty cool. That's actually really cool. So they're pursuing. You can go directly back and face any direction you want. That's actually really good. Especially if you're like in their, already in their back lines and you're attacking war machines and stuff. Ooh. I hate named characters, though. I like that rule. The boss's trophy rack. During a turn in which Kill Nick and his guys charged, they gain fear. And a plus one combat bonus for combat resolution. He has a hammer, which is strength plus two, AP one, armor main two. Not bad. He has a pick, his strength user, which is four, AP two, armor main two, multiple wounds two. Oh, sorry. The Skull Smasher has two profiles hammer or pick. How many points is he? He's 105 points. That's pretty good. I wonder if a mall's coming up for this guy. I would have thought no because I didn't see one leaked or like talked about or announced anywhere. But when he has a weapon with two profiles, it's not just a common weapon. I know they're going to re-release like some old old metal goblin characters. One of them is on a, a wolf. I can't remember what. Is, is that model holding a, a pickaxe or uh, a war pick by chance? I don't remember. Uh, the other special character, I'm damn near positive, is getting a new... Um, new miniature, because I'm pretty sure I saw it, and if I didn't see it, I didn't say that. I thought it was shown off already. We have Osrug Swamp Digger. It is a 195-point character. It's a Shaman Orc. It's only level 3. So this is the second time we've seen a named character wizard, the Bretonian one. Uh, that was another example. Nobody's level 4 yet. It's level 3. Uh, okay, Elemental or Troll Magic. We have uh, typical Goblin Shaman stats. No special rules. The Troll Caller. Unless he's fleeing, friendly troll mobs within Oz Drugs uh, command range may use his leadership instead of um, their own. That's just the Troll Horde special rule applied to him directly. He has Protect the Boss. This model cannot be targeted by enemy shooting or enemy spells while within three of a friendly troll mob. Unless the model is the closest target. Nice. While Ozdrug is within three of a friendly troll mob with a unit strength of six or more and is not fleeing, he may apply a plus one modifier to a casting roll he makes. Okay. We're going to take a level four. Uh, we have the troll hide shawl. Ozdrug improves his armor value by one. So he has a six of armor save. Great. <laughs> In addition, he has a regeneration of 5 plus and flammable special rule. He also comes with the bog wood staff. Strength plus 2, AP 1, fires 2 hands. Any wounds he does, heals. Okay, he's not terrible. Uh, I'll definitely use his model as a shaman. But I don't like paying for points for melee on my shaman. I don't want him there. I don't even care about the regeneration. I don't want him getting hit ever. I just feel like you can make a better... Goblin Shaman than this guy's rules. But look at look at that art. It's standing right there in the center. Pretty cool looking. Orkin Goblin Arcane Journal. I'm digging it. I can't wait to play it. In fact, keep in mind, remember, I'm gonna play two games with it this week. Uh one Goblin Horde and one Nomadic Law on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, which one I do might switch, so stay tuned for that. But either way, let me know what you think. Uh, any combos you saw? What are you liking? What are you hating? Are you starting to get worried that the Arcane Journals are going to throw off the balance of power? Well, I'm not seeing a whole lot of Bretonian and Tomb King things in, in uh, being talked about in the meta a whole lot. There's a few things. I do believe... I do believe I, I like the playstyle personally of the Grand Army competitions of both of those more than their like the exiles uh Aaron Shree war um what, what's it called the i can't remember the i can't remember the two game ones uh i think they're a fun one off to play but even in this one i think i'm gonna make, you know, you're gonna make a stronger list 
if that's your goal with grand army composition than the custom ones however the magic items that are brought from these arcane journals are pretty sweet and in particular this book is adding units that i really like i am not 100 percent sold on the orc sorry the black orc chariot yet i don't think it's bad i don't know if it's a necessity in orcs right now for, for the way i play the bone grinder gargant looks kind of nanners the troll hag i don't care i'm gonna bring that all the time i just love everything about it uh in a troll list i can see playing quite often i just feel like playing a troll list will be very similar to playing a orc sorry an ogre kingdoms list with all other ogre kingdoms tools so i think that play style will be better played as ogre kingdoms that being said i think the troll horde will be a lot of fun and we'll take some play testing figure out how it all works all together uh but either way <laughs> i'm very happy with this thank you games workshop for sending it to me see you in the next video